In this example, we start with a charged ring, and we want to find the electric potential along the axis of that charged ring, and then use that to find the electric field. So uh, if we've so far just used the particle model for potential, we know that the potential of a point charge is given by the constant uh, times the that charge times the distance away from the point where you want to know uh, what the electric potential is. And so this is a point charge. And so the question is then how do we deal with a continuous object of charge like this ring? Okay, so our approach, similar to what we've done before, is we take this infinitesimal slice of charge, we call dq, and then we want to find the uh, voltage at some height z here above the ring or some distance z away from the center of the ring along the axis of symmetry. And so this small amount of uh, charge, dq, is going to create an infinitesimally small amount of electric potential, dv, at that point z. And so that potential then, I can use my uh, point charge formula because this amount of charge is at a, essentially a point. So the amount of charge is dq, and it's some distance away. So, well, just sure, distance r. So what is r in this case? So r is the distance from the charge to the point where we want to evaluate the potential. And so here we call that uh, r, and then if the radius of our um, ring, we say, call that a, and so then we have that uh, r, of course, is equal to the square root of a squared plus z squared. And so now with this, now the idea is we have uh, the, we use our point charge formula, and now we need to integrate over our continuous distribution. And so you can think, okay, we have this ring, and so uh, our typical approach is we'd say our, we have this small amount of charge, it's equal to some uh, charge density, we say, okay, uniform, we didn't really mention that, uniform charge density, times t some infinitesimal length. Since this is a circle, we might call that an arc length, and we might think, okay, we want to integrate in a circle, we might integrate over theta, so we might charge, change uh, ds into theta, d theta, and integrate, okay, we, we sort of have a have a, a plan in mind about how to do these types of problems. So let's just go ahead and set that up here, where we have, uh, so we this dv, which we will integrate is equal to uh, k dq over uh, i a squared plus uh, z squared. So let's think about this for a minute. We want to integrate this uh, all the way around the circle. So we so sort of as a function of theta, right? So so theta. So what depends on theta? Um, k, of course, is a constant. It doesn't. Well, z is the same at uh, for every element dq, whether you're on uh, here or whether you're over here. Distance z is the same, as, as is the distance a. So in fact, this term right here is going to be constant as you integrate around this ring because it, these other parameters don't depend on theta. And so, well, that's that's really handy. Uh, before we had to, well, in a, you know, in other problems, we have to parameterize every term in here in terms of the integration variable. But since a and z aren't, aren't uh, uh, functions of theta, we can pull them out of the integral plus z squared, and we just get dq. And so we don't have to do anything. We don't have to parameterize at all. Since nothing else, everything is a t constant as we integrate around the ring, we just integrate all our little elements of dq, and we get the total charge q 
Okay, so this is one of those where just a little qualitative thought into what the integration means uh, really saves us a whole lot of time. And so our final potential V then is equal to K times the total charge over the uh, radius squared of the ring plus the height squared above the, uh, or the distance from the center, that combination, the square root.